So what we want to look at today, we kind of looked at these teams in the past. And in essence, what we want to look at today is why do these teams form leagues? Right? I mean, why do we have leagues at all in the first place? All right. So let's kind of look at this. My form leagues. All right. Leagues allow our teams to cooperate. And this is more than just uh, uh, all kinds of stuff, right? And we can basically set our schedule. So we're going to be able to have our teams playing against each other. In other words, our big market teams need to play our small market teams. So we want the Dallas Cowboys being able to play, and I'm trying to think of who would be a small market team in the NFL, um, Nashville, I guess. Right? We need the Dallas Cowboys playing Nashville. We need We need the New York Yankees playing Tampa Bay, right? I mean, this is what you need. This is what teams allow. And to a degree, you can expand this to college. This is one of the things that's kind of interesting. You know, if college football ever starts paying athletes, it's going to completely change the game. I mean, to a degree, college sports, college football already is the minor league. I mean, the minor league players just don't get paid anything for it. They're just essentially working for free. So once they actually start getting paid, and I think that will eventually happen, you're going to have essentially the exact same thing, right? Because you're going to have the big market teams, the big quote-unquote college footballs. These are the Alabamas, um, you know, Georgia, basically the SEC, really. They're not going to want to. They're only going to want to play other SEC games. They're not going to want to play Missouri State. Why would they ever want to do that? They're not going to be any. The where's, where's the purpose in that? That's not going to do anything, right? So in essence, these leagues allow teams to cooperate. It allows the big market teams, in essence, to play these smaller market teams, which in essence is what you need. Otherwise, you'll only have big market teams playing big market teams. So, for example, in the early days of the NFL, uh, everybody wanted to play against the Giants. Green Bay, and the Bears. All right. New York, Wisconsin, and Chicago's team. Because those were the teams playing, those teams brought in big money. Playing the smaller teams in the NFL didn't bring in as much money, didn't bring in as much attendance, so people didn't want to play them. Leagues also allow the rules to be set uh, and enforced. All right. So, for example, in Major League Baseball, 
you actually had two sets of rules. You got the Massachusetts rules, and you got New York rules. And these New York rules are basically similar to today's baseball. I mean, you couldn't be able to notice much of the difference between New York rules and today's rules when it comes to baseball, right? But Massachusetts rules, you're basically out when you're hit with the ball, right? It's not a matter of being tagged. It's a matter of we've got to hit you with the ball. Well, that's not going to be a lot of fun. Right? Uh, bases in Massachusetts rule were in a square, not a diamond. To win, you had to basically get 100 runs or to get every person out. All right, so you've got a square, no diamond, but square bases, all right, 100 runs or your nine players getting out, whichever, came, whichever comes first. Well, you can imagine how long it's going to take to get 100 runs. That's going to be a long game, all right? So if one set of teams is playing by one set of rules and another set of team is playing by a different set of rules, you're going to have problems, right? Or you've got this thing in uh, the NBA. Um, you know, making players dress out. Basically, they had to put on a suit and tie. Several years ago, this was back in the 80s and early parts of the 90s, the NBA was starting to have an image problem where people were starting to think of the NBA players as a bunch of gangsters. And that doesn't sell tickets, right? And so, in essence, what the NBA said was the NBA said, okay, when you guys are coming, from the time that you know you park your car and you walk in, you got to come in in a suit. You got to have your suit on the way out. You mean, basically you got to look clean and respectable. And a bunch of NBA players said, "No, we're not going to do that. You don't. You can't make us dress." And the NBA owner said, "Yes, we can. We pay your salaries. You're going to do this, or you're not going to play." All right. Same thing here with the NFL stuff that we're seeing here in terms of people uh, doing the anthem. I mean, people have a right to not stand for the anthem. I mean, they certainly do, and the NFL owners have a right to not play it. I mean, if the NFL owners wanted to push the issue, they could tell people, if you're not going to stand for the anthem, you're not going to be on the field, and we're going to fire you. I mean, they could do that. Or you have the same things with Major League Baseball in terms of uh, Pete Rose gambling. You know, he's got this lifetime ban from baseball. You've got the Black Sox from the 1920s who basically threw the World Series. Um, so leagues allow rules to be set and rules to be followed and rules to be enforced. We also have uh, cooperation in championship games. Through leagues, it's possible to define the winner, right? You can define the league champion. So in the NHL, we do that through the Stanley Cup. In the NFL, we do it through the Super Bowl. In Major League Baseball, we do it through the World Series, et cetera, right? We can, in essence, have championship games. <coughs> We got our Stanley Cup, World Series, Super Bowl, etc. And if you look at the data, for who's won different games, right? So here are our teams. I mean, and you can basically choose almost any year. 
All right. I mean, let's choose uh, let's see, 2008 here. So we see the owner here was, uh, in essence, the Giants. And if we wanted to know who the top team in 2008 was, overall, 0.688, Dolphins and Patriots, Pittsburgh Steelers at 7.5. Titans at 0.813. I think that's the top. So here we see in 2008, our top team is the Titans. All right. And our, I guess it's this one right here. This is the end. This is the 2000 season right here. So here's our Steelers and Cardinals. Right, and the top team was the Steelers. Well, the Steelers in 2008. Let's see, they are AFC if I remember correctly, 0.75. And if you look at the data for most years, the top team in the NFL does not win the Super Bowl. For most years, the top team in Major League Baseball does not win the Super Bowl. For most years, the top team in the NHL does not win the Stanley Cup. Why not just have the top team be the champion? Why have all of the championship games and stuff? Why not just say top team wins? So, for example, here in 2008, that would have been, like we said, the Titans. Why have all the other stuff? Exactly. Brings in revenue. It extends the season. And brings in revenue, right? I mean, technically speaking, Major League Baseball season's over. But there's still Major League Baseball on, and there's still people paying to go watch Major League Baseball games, right? Because now we're in the postseason. Same thing for the NFL, right? What's one of the most watched events on television? Every January or February, it's the Super Bowl, right? It also has the opportunity of reducing the chance that the highest percentage team wins the championship. If the highest percentage team that wins the championship has a smaller chance of winning, right? The highest percentage team for the season, right? So for, like we said, for this example, for you here, it was, it was the 2008 Titans. They did not make it to the Super Bowl. They didn't win. What does this do to the value of talent?
the highest percent team reduces the probability they're going to be the champion. What does that do to the value of the talent? Yeah, it makes it worth less, right? Because the, it's pretty easy to be, it's easier to be this than it is to win the Super Bowl, right? Because all these other games are essentially a whole bunch of single elimination games. I mean, all you got to do is have a bad week and you've lost, right? I mean, the interesting thing about football is it play, it's played for an hour, but there's really only about six to seven minutes of actual action. Do you guys know that? The other 54 minutes, people are standing around talking about what it is that they're going to do. And so you've purchased this talent. It's going to be used for basically six to seven minutes total. And this talent, I mean, you're, you're going to have days where in those six to seven minutes you're just not on you just don't feel good or whatever, you hurt your knee or whatever it is that you're going to be, right? And so sure enough here, the top percentage team doesn't go on to win the Super Bowl. If it was always this highest percent team essentially is the champion, the value of the talent is higher. So if the value of the talent is lower, what does that mean for that? Exactly. Because I can go out and I can hire athlete A, B, and C who are really, really good. And they're going to help me get to this guy. They're going to help me get to this point eight one three. But having this championship game, you still have all of these other games decreases the, the probability of winning. Right? I mean, let's... Do you see what I'm saying? Let's look at the 2007 regular season go. Um, Kansas City Chiefs, 5-0. and okay. What's the probability they're going to go 16-0? and Right? I mean, because these other teams right here, is it possible for the Jacksonville Jaguars to have an undefeated season? No. Texans? No. Titans? No. Colts? No. Broncos? No. Raiders? No. Chargers? No. All these other teams, is it possible for the Giants to have an undefeated season? No. In fact, I think they are the only ones, aren't they? So now there's only one team that can go on, right? So here's your regular season, done. And then you've got a couple of other games here. In essence, to win, to win the Super Bowl, you have to win all of these games. You see what I'm saying? I mean, everybody knows this, right? It's single elimination. It's not like Major League Baseball where you have to win best of seven, best of five, that sort of stuff, right? It's all single elimination. So once you get to start playing postseason, the team that wins is the team that wins all their games. Every other team, by definition, has to lose. You've increased, you've decreased the probability that that's going to happen. So by decreasing this probability, you've made this stuff right here matter less, right? Especially as they expand the number of teams that can go in with wild cards and things like that. I mean, people have this idea that wild cards are making it easier. Wild cards are actually doing this. Because if, it's, if there's more wild cards so that more of these people here are making it here into the postseason, Essentially, the clock starts all over. All of this winning doesn't matter as much. You see what I'm saying? It's more, it's more this part right here, and that can be, that's a lot more random. It makes the value of the talent in any particular team go down. Well, if the talent is actually worth less, then the wages are worth less. I don't have to pay them as much money.
leagues act to limit entry. All right. So assume you're wealthy. You want to start an NFL team. You go out and you hire players. You design the uniforms. You get a stadium built, etc. How do you get to join the league? What's the guy's name that runs Bass Pro? Johnny, Johnny what? Johnny Morris. Johnny Morris wants to have an NFL team. All right. It took them, they built the friggin' World Trade Center in a shorter amount of time than he built the wild, Wonders of Wildlife thing. Did you guys realize that? Did you ever think about that? The World Trade Centers fell down, they cleared the ground and rebuilt the thing in a shorter amount of time than he designed an aquarium. All right? The guys clearly got money to waste. So he says to himself, Springfield needs an NFL team. We have an aquarium now, we need an NFL team. He goes out, he hires a bunch of NFL players. He brings them here, squads about 100. So he hires 100 NFL players, he hires a coach, he hires all the assistants, he builds a stadium. And he says, okay, I'm ready to play. <coughs> what does the NFL say? What would they say? Seriously, what would they say to the guy? Screw you. Who do you think you are? In order for him to join the NFL, the NFL has to give him what? If I wanted to be a dry cleaner, what would I have to do? Yeah, I just go get the stuff and start cleaning clothes. If I want to, you guys have seen these trucks driving around town with gra cut grass and stuff like that. If I wanted to go do that, what would I have to do? Go get a truck, go get a trailer, go get a lawnmower, go start cutting grass, right? And that's it. I don't have to go around and ask all the people in town who are already cutting grass, can I cut grass? The new dry cleaner doesn't have to come in and say, can I start drying clothes? Can I start? They say, no. Right? So here are teams in the NFL and Major League Baseball and hockey and all of that kind of stuff. If you want to join the NFL, you essentially have to get their permission. So not only does the league tell you if you can join, it tells you where you can locate. Right? So not only if, but where. Right? So let's look at this. Let's look at uh, Allentown. Bethlehem. PA. Right? This is the third... largest metro area in Pennsylvania. Of course, the first being Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, and let's look at what we've got here. We've got Scranton, which is, of course, where the office is, right? That's where that place is at. This is a triple A team. They actually call themselves the Red Barons. We've got Trenton, New Jersey. This is the Thunder. This is single A ball. All right. You got Reading, Pennsylvania. And it's Reading, not Reading. This is double A ball. Call themselves the Phillies. 
right? So if you look at populations here, this guy's 407. 125. Trenton, New Jersey, 83,242. Scranton here, 549. Uh, 454. Allentown here, 816012. These are the populations. All right? And then we've got uh, Phillies, obviously in Philadelphia. And of course, that's Major League Baseball. That population is 5968252. Right. So here's this town right here. Remember Springfield, SGF here. We're in the like 430 to 470,000 population range depending upon how you want to calculate our, our metro area. So here we are, we've got double A ball, right? We have the Springfield Cardinals. You've got Trenton, New Jersey with 83,000 people. They got a single A team. You got Reading, Pennsylvania, 407,000 our size with a double A team. You've got this town right here, 549,000. This town is smaller than this town. And they have triple A ball. Philadelphia obviously has Major League Baseball. Here's this town, third largest in Pennsylvania, 816,000. That's a pretty good size. They cannot get a team. There is no team there. Right? And you can see on here, here's your map, right? So here's our triple A. We said our Scranton team was our double A, right? So here is our, now here's our triple A right here. Reading is our double A ball here. Here's our Major League Baseball. Here's our single A ball. And what am I missing here? Scranton, Trenton, Reading. Major League Baseball. Triple A. Double A, single A. Right here. Here's them. What happens if a team goes in right here? Sixty-one miles. Seventy-six miles. Forty miles. Seventy-five miles. 40 miles, 75 miles, 70 miles, 70 miles, 70 miles. What happens if a team goes in right here? Third largest. 816,000 people. Can't get a baseball team. Why? going to take away from the other people's stuff. It's exactly right. If you put a team here in Allentown, you're going to dilute the market for Reading. You're going to dilute the market for Scranton. You're going to dilute the market for Trenton. You're going to dilute the market for the Phillies. 
So not only does Major League Baseball tell you if you can enter, it tells you where you can go in. And they say, you're not going into Allentown. Right? I mean, if you think about it, it doesn't make sense at all. This is double A ball. This is a city twice as large. It's, the market area is twice as large and you can't get a team. It should be the other way around, right? It should be this guy, the double A team is here. There's no team here. But that's not the way it works, right? You're, deleting, you're diluting market share. And so leagues allow us to say, here's where this team is going to be. We don't want four teams in football in Dallas. We want one team because they will dilute each other's market share. We don't want three football teams in New York. We want two. The baseball team, that is here, where did they used to be? You guys know? Montreal. They used to be in Montreal. And so they're moving. Why send them to DC? Why not send them to New York? They already have two teams. I guarantee you New York could support a third baseball team. There's no doubt in my mind. There's 22 million people there. Why go to DC? Uh, that is a close team, yeah. Why not go to DC? Remember, the Yankees, on average, win 25% of the World Series. They go to the World Series, on average, 33% of the time. One out of every three years, the Yankees are in the World Series. One out of every four, they win it. Our uncertainty of outcome hypothesis says what? What does the uncertainty of outcome hypothesis say? Exactly. So before the season even begins, whoever wins the World Series this year, come August of 2018, not August, March of 2018, before the season has even begun, there's a 33% chance the Yankees are gonna go into the, are gonna make it into the World Series. Before you even begun, before they even played game one, 33% chance. 25% chance they're gonna win before you've played the first game. What does that do to the uncertainty of outcome? It really, really reduces it, right? And one of the reasons, and we'll see this in more detail a little bit later on, one of the reasons that they have that is because they can have so much market power, they have such a large market, they're able to command so much in revenue, they can afford to, play, to pay a gazillion dollars for all of their players and have a huge payroll. So, one way to reduce that is to give them more competition by not only with the Mets, but with the team that's in Washington, not moving from Montreal to Washington, but moving Montreal to New York. That's going to reduce the market power of the New York Yankees, increase the uncertainty of outcome. Why didn't they do that? It's better for baseball. 
There's no doubt about that. So why didn't they do that? In order to move into New York, what are you going to have to do? Oh, there's space. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? If I want to go into dry cleaning, what do I have to do? Just go into dry cleaning. If I want to start cutting grass for a living, what do I have to do? Just start cutting grass. If I want to move the team from Montreal to New York, what do I have to do? I got to get permission. And under the New York Yankees and the, and the New York Mets going to give me permission to come in and dilute their market share. No. They're not going to do that. You have to get permission. You can't just have the team show up wherever you want to show up. So what you're looking at here, and the team players all, I mean the team owners all know this. Here's the quantity we have of something. Here's its price. All right, here's our demand curve. And of course, the demand curve doesn't go below the axis. I don't know why I drew it like that. Here's our demand curve, right? And when we have more and more competition, what happens to our demand curves? What do they become? More elastic, right? So we know that if we've got some, some cost, let's just assume marginal cost is constant. Q1, P1, right? We know that we've got this guy right here in profits. That's what that guy tells us. If the demand curves become more elastic because we have more competition, remember it's the income and substitution effects that make the demand curve be the shape that it has. The more substitutes there are, the larger the substitution effect, the larger the substitution effect, the more elastic the demand curve becomes. And so he starts shifting to something like, say, this demand to marginal revenue to. Well, now this guy's here, and it's, that's just coincidence that it showed up there. That's not the way it's supposed to be. It's just pure coincidence. Okay. Q2, P2, there's those profits right there, as opposed to these profits, right? If there's more competition, I can't charge this price to go, I have to charge this price. And if the marginal cost is constant and I'm charging a smaller price, I make less money. Profits are smaller. So one of the advantages of the league is that it essentially sets up rules and says who can come in and who can't come in. What time do we get out of here? 55? So rival leagues here are an opportunity. Are people trying to provide a different type of the sport, trying to fill these markets?
So here we see an attempt to provide, in essence, more of the sport, right? For fans who can't get enough or they want a different amount of it. They want it in a different quantity. So we've had rival sports in leagues before. We've had them in Major League Baseball. One of their leagues was the Pacific Coast League. This was, in essence, a rival league. And before this guy, you've got, in essence, um, the American League and you've got the National League, right? Here's this whole completely separate league. We've got to kill this thing. We don't want a third league. We don't want a, another form of baseball coming in. What are we going to do? We're going to take teams. We're going to move them to the Pacific Coast. Before they were the L.A. Dodgers, they were the Brooklyn Dodgers. The reason you're called the Brooklyn Dodgers is because you're dodging the trains as they're driving along the tracks. That's where the dodging comes in. The public transportation in Brooklyn, you're dodging that. That's where the Brooklyn Dodgers comes from. But you've got all of these teams here on the Pacific Coast League starting to form up. They say, can't have that. Hey, teams over here, why don't you move to the other coast? We're going to kill the Pacific Coast League. How did we kill this? Exactly. Hey, Negro League is getting on up there. They're starting to take away market share. Can't have that. We're going to have integration. And people have this idea, oh, man, integration was this great, fantastic thing. People finally realized that blacks and whites are equal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Man, it had nothing to do with that. It was all about get rid of that. That thing is a threat. It's taking away too much money. You've got to get rid of it. All right? Got the same thing in football. XFL, you guys remember that? You probably do, maybe you don't. This was a league, it was called the Extreme Football League, right? I mean, you think cheerleaders don't wear much today. In the XFL, they wore almost nothing. The, the tackling was even more extreme. They actually had little helmet camps, so you could actually see people getting hit and stuff, right? You had the USFL. The United States Football League. This guy was providing football in the spring. Actually owned by, one of the teams was actually owned by somebody in particular. Do you know who that was? Donald Trump. And the NFL was successful in, in essence, shutting him out. He actually sued the NFL and said, you guys are in violation of antitrust. You're a trust. And the Supreme Court said, yeah, you're right. That's a trust. Here's your damages. Your damages are $1. We're going to triple the damages under the Sherman Antitrust, or under the Clayton Act. The damages are tripled. Here's your $3 check. And he has never cashed the check. Uh, you've got the World Football League. Same thing trying to provide the sport in different ways. Why does the NFL play in London and Mexico City and Japan? Expanding. They're trying to expand and at the exact same time keep other leagues from showing up in London, Tokyo, Mexico City, etc. We'll pick it up from here on Wednesday.